This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be unboxing Chanel. A little something something I got at the boutique. Um, it was an ordeal. I was blocked. <laughs> this is a big story. So check out that story. Link is in the card section up above, but also in the description box down below. Watch this video first and then go back to watching the other one, obviously. Uh, but uh, wow, that was that was a story time video for uh, for for the for the year for the gods. So but anyway, we're going to do an unboxing now and uh, it's a heavy one. Yay. Yay. It's actually heavier than I thought it would be. I wonder why. I always wondered, did they really wrap into the box what I bought, or did they not? Hmm. Oh, also, check out the unboxing of this little beauty here from the Spring Summer 21 collection. Uh, the little microscopic Chanel bag necklace from Spring Summer 2021. Card section up above, link in the description box down below. So, unboxing time. Before we unbox this video, if you like my content, thumb up this video, and also subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Decab all spelled together there as well. Uh, gain access to extra perks there as well. And thank you to my patrons and members who have already pledged. And also thank you to all my co-unboxers in the uh, chat section because we are filming live. And uh, everybody's already writing, bag, 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 says Jack. <laughs> Daniel says, I am all in favor of an unboxing. Um, Mr. Philip Fabulous says, leather seasonal piece, I'm sure. Olfactive Story says, oh, looks more like clothes or bag. Debbie says, leather seasonal piece? Hmm, Gautier is ready for this. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, yeah, a bag in a funky color, I believe. My female intuition is telling me. Interesting guesses, you guys. So excited for this is Lynn's review. So let's check it out. It's quite heavy. But as I said, also, see how difficult it was to get it in my video on uh, me being blocked at Chanel. Hmm. But then, you know what happened? After, after I um, got this, well, not after I got this. So as the situation was evolving and I finally got to purchase this, I received... Oh, another thank you from Coco. So we did get like, you know, we got a couple of things here. And I, they've been spoiling me rotten lately. They want, they really, I, you know, I got this. They really want me to turn into an alcoholic. I got another bottle of Bali. Yes, we got another champagne bottle as a gift. And I'm like, thank you so much, Coco. Um, look at that beautiful little camellia wrapped in, in the Chanel. Oh, there's two... There's two camellias. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. Well, anyway, so I'm going to put this in the, in the fridge. You know, we opened that one Chanel champagne I got for Chanel number no. five's birthday. And maybe I'm going to drink a glass of champagne to celebrate this unboxing as well later on. But for now, let me just put the bottle down here because I still have a little bit of champagne left from Chanel Number no. Five's birthday celebration. Check out that video as well while you're at it. Um, 100 birthdays of Chanel Number no. Five. If you want to see me unboxing the biggest per bottle of pure Chanel Number no. Five perfume that I have ever had in my life, 120 ml from the 70s. This is 50 years old. You should really check that video out because it's something else. Experiencing the smell of this, it was sealed with the badrushage and everything. So unboxing it, giving it oxygen for the first time and testing it out for the first time was such an experience. Card section up above the video. And um, you can also check out my entire rerun is exceptionally long, but beautiful. It's like four hours of celebrating. So it's another video. There's a full live stream dedicated to Chanel number no. five. Uh, the celebration of its 100th birthday also on my channel so go check out that rerun of the live stream as well as just the unboxing video separate of of this uh, beauty here it's just to die for every time i see it and lift it i'm like in awe of its beauty so here we are this is it this is the inside oh my god it's so heavy okay so this is the inside and let me pull something out um 
I was also gifted uh, that day this gorgeous book and this slider here. If you want to know all of the contents of this book and you want to see me read the book and explain the book and all the details about the iconic 1112 bag, which used to be called the Timeless Classic, uh, join me. Become a member today on my channel or join me on Patreon, on my Tier 2 Patreon section or Tier 2 membership channel memberships on YouTube and you get to see the exclusive video that I filmed just for my tier two members and patrons on the Chanel book and all the new storylines that follow the new re-edition of the Timeless Classic bag. So I got that book as well. So check out that video on Patreon and my membership uh, program on YouTube. So hold on. Oh, no. I gotta have to lift it. It's too heavy. Why is this box so heavy i don't remember it being that heavy so we got the um i always loved showing i just love this tissue paper with the with the chanel little logos everywhere see them well you see them more if i stretch it out ah there they are look at them appear magically and then disappear reappear disappear pull this little ribbon off because I can't pull out the box if I don't detach the ribbon why is this so heavy I really wonder I always want this is a true unboxing I haven't unboxed this yet guys um, I, I truly wonder if when I don't unbox this stuff I'm like is this stuff that I bought really in here or did they package something else in here <laughs> I mean and I'm always worried I think like oh, if they package something else it's probably going to be something lesser than what I bought. Okay, let me do a screenshot of this little bag. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Let me position myself for the thumbnail, you guys. We're working thumbnails here as we go along. This is irritating me. This little... Better. Kind of better. Ish. Camellia is off. Let me flip it like this. Oh, <laughs> it's like where was this box been? Why does it look so dusty? Okay. Now what is this? Was it busted on this side? Oh no, it's just. I guess the dust. All right. Ooh, oh my God, it's so heavy. Why is it so heavy? Ah. Oh. Okay, hold on. Oh, okay, care booklet. With the microfiber glove. By the way, you know how many unboxings I see and people don't know what this is for? People say that this is a pouch to store your receipt in. Guys, this is a microfiber glove to buff the leather of your product. It's not to keep your receipt in. It's the shade. Okay, 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 okay. Sticker. Ah. Uh. What is this? My obsession. Ah, oh my God, I'm gonna faint. <laughs> okay, so here it is, you guys. And they gave me the big microfiber dust bag as well. Thank you so much. Wait, why is this so heavy still? Is there something else hiding in here? Did I get a perfume bottle? No. Wishful thinking. I got the, the booze, that's enough, right? Wait, hold on. Can you put this down? <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to talk to you about my obsession 
with pouches. <laughs> Let me take the, oh my gosh, I got, <laughs> my sales associate, she knows. I got two of these dust, um, dust things to protect the pouch, great. Now, I fell in love with this. I did not know that they actually still made these. This is the Timeless Classic or the 1112 pouch. They do also make them in lambskin leather, but uh, I saw the lambskin leather and I compared it to the caviar and the carrier was just way better. It comes with a back pocket as well. And, oh, she did such a great job. I got the black inner filling. This is gorgeous. Okay, so it's completely lined in leather. Wait, where is this one made? Could you believe it was made in Italy? No, wait. Is this made in Italy? It should be made in France. Ah, made in France, okay. Now, because I, I was shown two of them to choose which one I liked more, and I just forgot to look inside uh, of the second one. There you have the made in France stamp in gold, because this one is in gold hardware. Completely lined in leather. And it still has its protective sticker here in the front, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. Also, check out the unboxing of this little beauty here on my channel, the card section up above. I just unboxed this one a short while ago. So you might be thinking I'm crazy because just another while ago, I got this pouch. And you're going to be like, Jacob, you're crazy. Why did you get two pouches? Well, this is the love of my life. The 255 pouch is where it's at. But... When I saw this one, I was like, oh, damn, <laughs> I really need both. They're different enough for me to warrant both purchase. Are they the same size? A little bit, more, almost the same, but um, the Timeless Classic pouch is a bit bigger than the 255. And you do get this kind of, you know, classic bag. I want to call it the little tongue with the double C logo, while here they didn't go that route. They made it even more simple. They took that off. And they just made one straight line and put the lock in the leather. And uh, But, of course, this one is more streamlined because it doesn't have a back pocket. And this one does. So check out the unboxing of this one on my channel and the review of it. Two separate videos. And uh, so this one comes in lambskin, caviar in different colorways. I had a strawberry one in my hand. It was more like a raspberry color. But... Um, they're both made in France, which is great. And honestly, you guys, this is where it's at now. It's all about the pouches. I'm going to make a separate video just for Chanel pouches, but I can tell you already now, this is the future of it. And you know I'm always spot on before the, the trend even hits. Get your pouches before they go up in price. A price increase is coming. And Sex and the City are shooting another season. And you know, they made pouches really big in the late 90s and early 2000s. They would always wear their pouches when they would go out and about. And I can tell you this. Nobody's talking about pouches at the moment. Nobody cares about... And this is a bag. This is, by the way, in... Well, it was on their... On the Chanel website, it was in the bag section. This is not a small leather good. This is a full-blown bag. It's just a pouch, clutch, pochette but it's a full-blown bag, so it's not a small leather good. And um, nobody really cares about clutches, nobody talks about them, everybody's into the chain bags. So these have not really gone up in price that much, so these, even though they're lined in leather and made in France, they cost less than the mini square used to cost before the price increase. So this is the new price Basically, these cost today the price that the minis used to cost a year or two ago. Which is insane, considering how well they're made. They're also made with the bag-in-bag -bag concept, two bags in one, because you get the interior bag and leather, and then they make the exterior one separate, and then they unite them. So there's first that. Second, clutches and pouches are not in yet. But you know, remember a couple of years ago when I um, made the video on the saddlebag? This was way before Maria Grazia Cutie was even in the picture, before Kim Jones was in the picture. I told you, get yourself a saddlebag. Now they're just a hundred, uh, they were back then like a hundred, two hundred dollars on secondhand uh, websites. And people kind of laughed at me, whatever. One year later, <laughs> they dropped the redesign of the saddlebag and boom. Mark my words. Clutches 
pouches, pochettes. They're coming. So, and they're coming big. And there's reason for that because they're so comfortable, so easy to use, and so, I think, because of this lockdown situation, the time that we've spent at home all this time, we've become more intimate with our objects. It's less about quickly put throwing on a bag, shoulder, and running out. This is more about holding something feeling safe. And you don't hold your bags that have chains strapped to them. This is more 2021 to me. This feels like the time we're living in. This feels like the safety, just cuddling, holding your bag, feeling it, squishing it. It's, it's, it's so, I don't know. When I discovered this one, this is the first one that I got, I hugged it immediately and I was like, oh, this feeling of having it like close and hugging it is like something that I haven't had with any one of my other bags really because they got chains except for my yellow clutch from the Grease Cruise collection, which, as I said, stay tuned. A video on just clutches is coming. But, uh, oh, look at this. This is this would be a great thing. Look at the symmetry of it all. This is like an outfit. Soldier, very 80s. <gasps> um, I want to say, I want to do a thumbnail with this, maybe. Or just a photo, just for the sake of it. Hold on. You know. So it's very 2021, this feeling of safety and organic combination with you and your bag. It's just, I swear to you, when I first hugged it, I was like, oh, okay, this is what I was missing. This was what I was missing all this time, this connection to, to my bag. And um, so the 255 was a must. And then I saw this one as well. And I was like, and this was also, this one is from last summer. So they still have it in stock. It's not in production anymore but you could still find it. It's still available in some stocks. And um, yeah, I saw this one and I was like, okay, uh, yeah. Hmm. And the price increase is coming up and these are always in the price increase. They're always included. So they go up in price as well. So getting this now, a full blown bag for the price of a mini, the, what a mini used to be two years ago. Sure. I mean, it's a no brainer, but I mean, of course, it's still a lot of money, but for Chanel standards, it's like, it's like a no-brainer. But nobody's looking at these bags because nobody's into this yet, okay? But they're coming back, and they're coming back big, so mark my words. It's all about the clutch. 2021 and, and the foreseeable future, 2022 as well, it's all about the clutch, you guys. So it doesn't have to be Chanel. It can be whatever other brand, whatever you like, whatever you love. But it, it and also, you know, you don't have this issue of the chain being too short, too long for your body, for your build. Are you too tall? Are you too tiny? Does the bag hit your hip or is it too low or too high? Like no matter how skinny or fuller you are, this always goes with anything because you're holding it in different ways. You could hold it like this. 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 So you can make it look bigger or smaller according to how much you want to show off the bag. And if you don't want to show off the logo, you just flip it and protect it even more. And you just go with the flow like this. They work very well. I find them psychologically the best bag you can have nowadays. Second best would be something with a handle. Because again, you have that tactile experience of holding on to something, which makes us feel safe because we have the feeling that we're drowning and we're sinking into something because psychologically this lockdown period has been, it felt like sinking. And so you need to grasp onto something to hold it. So my chain bags, they kind of free my hands. Yes, that's a plus, but I feel better at the moment holding on to something. It just psychologically soothes me in a way. So handle or a clutch is, is what makes me just feel much more comfortable and better. Another interesting thing to note is that this one is much thicker than this one. It's a different leather. It's also more padded. So you can kind of see um, how more sleek this one is than this one. This one has just more padding. Another beautiful thing is if you're traveling, you can take both of them with you. Look, they, you know, they're like back to back together. Look how little space they occupy. That's another plus side uh, to these clutches. You don't have that chain situation going on where the, with a thicker bag and then traveling with it. Where do you put the chain? How do you store the chain? You got to be careful with the chain. The chain can dent the leather if you put the chain in wrongly. Here you don't have that issue. You're a little bit more stress-free, but you have the full-blown experience of a Chanel bag, 
because it's made with that same attention to detail, with that same quality, and the leather inside and out. So you are having a timeless... So to me, what I'm trying to say is this is a timeless classic in clutch form. It's not just a seasonal piece. It's not. I mean, clutches are forever. But um, you do get the full-blown experience of the timeless classic minus the chain, which, as I said, in some cases can be really annoying uh, to have. So... Daniel asks, does the perspiration from the hands affect the leather in long term? Is it better to wear gloves when holding the bag? That's a good question, Daniel. And let me tell you the answer to that question. Um, it does have an effect on the leather. That's why I went. That's another one of the reasons why I went for uh, caviar and not lambskin. The lambskin is soft and supple, but lambskin does not really like humidity or water or sweat very much so if you're let's say always holding your clutch down here always 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 every time you grab for it you always have one way of wearing it you don't flip you don't change the way you hold your bag with time if you always hold it here with your sweat if you wetten the lambskin as supple as soft and as soft as it is when it's new if you keep putting that sweaty touch only on one spot the leather in that area might get uh, hard it get it kind of like when it gets wet and then dries out it doesn't stay flexible and soft anymore it hardens that's a potential danger so i would still recommend if you only love lambskin leather chanel bags then get the ones on chain because you don't touch them a lot they're hanging on your shoulder you don't touch the bag a lot you know because lambskin but caviar, you're good to go because you can wipe it off easily. The little pebbles, the clever thing about these pebbles is they're elevated. The little tiny, let me kind of zoom in. These little tiny pebbles, they're not just a print. They are elevation. They're elevated. So everything around every little caviar pebble, this is called caviar leather, Every little elevation, it, it has like a little canyon in between it. So when you are holding your bag, you're not completely pressing it because there's a little bit of air going through these um, little canyons. So, you, you know, you're never completely suffocating your bag by keeping it held this way. So the caviar really helps in this instance. The caviar helps a lot when you're holding it. It's actually made for holding it. First, it doesn't slide away because the caviar pebbles also hold on to you it makes it less it causes a bit of friction you know lambskin it also it's not plastic it doesn't just slide away but lambskin is more slidey than caviar so first of all the um, the grip is better on it and second of all it breathes more so it doesn't let you vacuum seal your skin onto the bag so caviar is perfect for clutch perfect for clutch and uh, this one is also really good because it does have a coating so it's a bit more shiny than your regular 255 bag that coating it's like a slight gloss over it which is really good because that helps um from the leather from absorbing your sweat and water so they did a really intelligent shrewd move on this one by coating it by glazing it ever so slightly and because this is de-stressed uh calf skin um it also has these little kind of, you can see like these v veins running through it. And they also allow a little bit of air passing through. Not as much as the caviar though, but it's definitely um, much more robust and reacts to wet, sweat, or heat than lambskin would. So I suggest lambskin for your chained bags, but I suggest caviar for your clutches. Or you could do the de-stressed on the 255 if you can find it, because these are a bit rarer to hunt down. Um, what else did I want to say? Let me just check this little pouch in here. Is this one? Oh no, this one has terrible. I was checking the inside of this cotton pouch. This is the terrible, it's the bad cotton inside and out. Thank you for subscribing, Shane. And uh, this one, the other little pouch I got with the black one, this one is all soft. Thank you for subscribing, Andy. <laughs> this one is super soft on the inside. So this is a rarer type of pouch. So I'm using that there as well. Thank you for subscribing, Michael. A lot of new subscribers. That's cool. <laughs> and thank you for subscribing, Kimberly. So I would recommend having this. Okay, how many? <laughs> Yo so Yasiel, thank you too for subscribing. All right. So I guess we're through with the new subscribers. Yes. Okay. So 
This is gold hardware, forgot to mention. No, I didn't mention it, but it's a very, very pale gold hardware. For a lot of people that say that Chanel used to do real gold plating, 24 karat gold plating in the 80s, 90s, and they stopped, they still do real gold plating. It's just that it's a much lighter toned uh, down gold. So it's not going to be 24 karat, it's going to be what? What do they do? Uh, 18, 11, 8, 3, 7, depends on the grading. But so it's, it's a lower grading, not necessarily because they want to save money. It's because they think that aesthetic is, suits them more today. They think that those kind of darker yellow golds are a little bit um, not as elegant as Chanel perceives elegance to be today. So in fact, even this uh, little necklace bag is, um, is gold, but uh, not that yellow gold that, that we're used to from the 90s, that we love so much from Chanel from the 90s. So I'm fine with this one being... A little bit paler. I wouldn't have minded being really yellow gold, but this is fine as well. On this bag, I'm also fine. It doesn't have to be that hard yellow gold. And you got that little po pocket in the back, what they will love to call the Mona Lisa smile, which can also help you hold it. Oh, little thumbnail moment here as well. Just a little moment there. So thank you guys so much for watching this unboxing. If you like this video, thumb it up. And let me get to your comments as well. Jack says, goodness. Trin says, keep going, subscribe. <laughs> Come on, stuff, yeah. <laughs> I'm Louis says, oh wait, there's a lot of, okay, I'm Louis says, the other day I was walking around the town and I had in my hand a paper bag and I was grabbing the bag like if it was a clutch. And at that moment, I understood what you were saying about the comfort of having a clutch. Thank you. This is ex this is such a good example, Louis. It, this is the thing, like a paper bag and you just held it like that and it's just, oh. first of all, you're feeling your life. You're not just wearing it to show it off to somebody else. You're holding it for yourself. You're feeling it for yourself. It's such an amazing feeling. I'd love to see a microscopic view of the canyons uh, and pebbles. Oh, a macro, a, a macro, like a really zoomed in view. That could be interesting. I could try to do that with my camera and post it on my Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, Instagram profile dedicated to my Chanel collection. So you could, uh, yeah, coming soon, coming soon. But I'm also going to make a video reviewing this bag in detail as well. So that's going to come as well. So I might be posting those zoomed in photos into that video. Deco, do you like their O-case clutches? They do look much less sophisticated, but I do also find them easy and practical. This is an interesting point, MK. I was asked, so that second bag that on this day of this purchase is uh, that I didn't get, ultimately, was an O-case. And it was an O-case from the, still available from uh, the um, Karl Lagerfeld, um, last Metier Da collection, the Egyptian collection. And it was the one with the graffitis all over it. And two reasons why I didn't, I mean, I might still get it if it doesn't sell out because, you know, it's, it's already been two years in the store. I might still get it one day, but this is the thing I'm thinking, what I don't like is that they use glazing on the sides of the zipper pulls, like all the leather bits that are protruding are all glazed and it's, it looks very rubbery. The glazing just, it's chunky. It doesn't look very well executed. It looks poorly finished. And, and that's an issue for me. I, you know, that's the reason why I didn't go for that. I didn't go for it because I, I, the glazing and the metal zipper on the inside, because I was thinking I could put my iPad in there and, but the O case inside has another zip pocket with a metal zipper. So if you put your iPad in there, that metal zipper is going to always hit your iPad. It's going to scratch your iPad. And I just wanted something clean inside and simple. And then I was told, well, you could make a little felt thing to put in. I'm like, yeah, but if I already have to spend so much money on something, then I got to buy this extra, that extra, do this. Then I got to buy that to adapt it to this. I'm like, well, then no, I'll just, it's too complicated, too complicated. And it has a metal zipper to open it. So pulling in and out, an iPad, because I would use that case as my protection case. I wouldn't buy a case for the iPad and then put that iPad with the case inside of the old case. That's too much. So I want something comfortable, simple, and safe for the iPad, but then that zipper on the outside, so every time you pull out the iPad, you gotta be careful that you don't pull the iPad against the zipper and scratching it. So the old case is just a little bit much for me. 
it's too much opulence and something that should be more practical. So they should be not using those scratchy metal zippers. They should not be using the glazing. They should not be using super scratchy metal zippers on the inside. They call that O case a makeup case, but I'm like, yeah, but even your makeup, I mean, you know, I have Chanel makeup and these are also beautiful lacquered containers. I don't want them scratched because the inside of the O case has a metal zipper pull and I'm carrying all of this makeup inside of that pouch and then in my bag and then it moves around and when I take this thing out because it's been shifting up and down inside of the pouch it's all scratched up because there's a stupid metal zipper inside of the pouch like I don't think they're I don't think they're they're thought through well they do have some O cases I know some O cases are simpler they don't have the inside pocket but I don't like those simpler ones I don't like the exterior materials used for them they a little bit they feel a little bit meh to me so I haven't found yet an O case that 100% convinced me. The one from the Egyptian collection convinced me in because I like that print, it reminds me of Carl's Egypt collection, but not 100% because of the elements that I told you, in my opinion, were lacking. Love them both, says Jack. Lol, is your baby Dacob those pouches? Lol, is your baby Dacob those pouches? I'm trying. I don't understand that sentence. <laughs> she said, oh, the 255 pouch can be more wearable as it's more casual and comfortable. Alfactor Soy says, pochettes are timeless classic. Totally agree with you. There's no way for me to get any bag from Chanel because they haven't opened a boutique in my country yet, says Lynn's review, and the prices just keep increasing. Oh, that's, oh, that's bad. When you know everything is closed, but they keep increasing. Daniel says, I totally love the look of the pouches. I think the lack of the strap would ex uh, exasperate me if I used it, but I'm sure they are worth the trouble. I'm sure... Oh, the lack of strap. I don't think it's trouble. To, I think it's less trouble to have this one than to have the ones with the strap. You would be maybe scared to lose it, to leave it somewhere, because it's... But I don't know. I have pouches, just not Chanel pouches, says Debbie. So you like pouches too. Good. Yeah, pouches are... Take up the fortune teller. Mark my words. The future is in the pouches. Oh, the classic is so pretty, says Trin. Daniel says, I always say that too many and pouches is a contradiction in terms. Yeah, pouch is always good to have. <laughs> I low-key low also like this one better than the 255, says Jesus. Really? Oh, I like this one better than the 255, says I'm Louis. How come, you guys? That's an interesting topic to also maybe make. I, I, I mean... I don't know. I love them both. They're both my babies now. I've adopted both of them. But, um, I mean, this is more what we're used to from Chanel, from the Lagerfeld Chanel era. This is more what we're kind of brainwashed. To, you know, this is like, oh, Chanel. And this is more like, what is this? But this is more 50s Chanel. So this is more going back into the 50s, to the roots. And this is more 80s. And you can see the difference in style. You can see the, the, the difference in approach. It's the same size pouch, more or less. But this has that 50s Chanel elegance. This has that 80s Chanel opulence. And you're either... This is a typical duality of Chanel. We have this, what I mentioned in my other videos, this aseptic, more detached, almost, I want to say, Protestant <laughs> um, approach to aesthetics. And this is more like the Catholic opulent Southern decadent uh, approach to, to, to luxury. Pouches are the new timeless classic, says Mr. Philip Fabulous. I totally agree with you. It looks very tactile. It is, Jack. It, it is, Jack. Lynn's review says, oh, I got another pouch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I always miss the live stream because I always start, oh, no. But you're here now. Okay, read that one already. So, um, Letty says, oh, my God, that pouch, I want it. <laughs> It's pouch season. I'm telling you, it's pouch season. So, okay, let's end the video here. I'm not going to bore you anymore uh, with it, but th that's the concept, you see. They're both Chanel. They're both quintessentially Chanel, but one has that 50s aseptic and more austere vibe while Coco was still alive, that severity that she had, which, which I love over everything else. This is it. And this has the more flamboyant rediscovery of Chanel when Carl took over, brought in the double C lock, and just added that kind of voluptuous, decadent luxury, thickness, more padding, more roundedness to everything. So yes, they're very different. Isn't that fabulous? Same 
size, same kind of concept, but the aesthetic approach is so different that you get to really understand what Coco Chanel is as opposed to what Chanel the brand is today. And yes, sometimes there are Chanel brand moments when I'm like all for it, like this case. And then there are those times most often when I'm all for Chanel's heritage. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, thumb it up and uh, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today, gain access to extra perks, such as being listed here in the sidebar as co-producer of the Fashion Bunker at the end of every video. In the credits roll, same perks apply to all of y'alls if you decide to join me on Patreon. Super Dacob was built together on Patreon. On Patreon, you also get to see extra videos that don't come to YouTube, exclusive only to Patreon. You also get access to uh, links and uh, reduction codes to uh, purchase the merch in the Fashion Bunker merch store for cheaper. But you also get access to exclusive pre-show live streams, live streams only for my Tier 2 members on YouTube and my Tier 2 patrons. So thank you for my patrons and members who have already pledged. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Decaball spelled together. You can also follow me on two Chanel dedicated Instagram profiles. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, dedicated to my Chanel collection. This bag, photos of this bag coming soon. <laughs> and uh, you can also follow me on my other Instagram profile called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to the life of Coco Chanel. There I get to talk and bring back to life the memory of this uh, wonderful, intelligent, and a quirky woman that I love so much, which is Gabrielle Bonheur, Coco Chanel. So, you guys, whether it be the old school or the new school, well, even the new school is becoming kind of old school because Carl passed away, and this, it, this does have that 80s vibe, which the 80s have been 40 years, have happened 40 years ago. <laughs> it's kind of shocking to say it. 40 years ago, uh, the 80s, it felt like yesterday. Hmm. Little did we know, yesterday was 40 years ago. 40 years ago is the new black, I say. Enjoy your Chanel's, whether it be in dreams, in nail polishes, in bags, in um, advertisements from vintage Vogue magazines. Uh, Trin says, I love them both. Thank you for loving them both. I love them both too. Enjoy your Chanel's, no matter in which format, shape, style, or form. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.